Wizards of the West Coast. Tapping out and slinging spells. I hate your deck. If you really want to support I Hate Your Deck, there's a lot of ways to help support us. Number one way is through Patreon. Patreon is a great place where you get to join our community. We have a Discord where we play a lot of magic with our friends. And there's such a community of people from around the world in our Discord. So if you want access to our deck list, do you want to play magic with a lot of people from all over the world and interact or help brew your decks, the I Hate Your Deck Discord through Patreon will help you get all that done. Hey, if you've been liking I Hate Your Deck, hit the like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notifications when we have new episodes coming out. And we also have bonus episodes. If you wanna see those bonus episodes that were too hot for YouTube, join our Patreon to check that out. Before we start our game, we need to show our sponsor some love. Here's our sponsor, and our show will continue right after, so stick with us. I Hate Your Deck would like to thank our sponsor, No Pulp Media. It's where we're shooting right now, and it's where a lot of people come to record music, or do podcasts. So if you're looking to do that, check out No Pulp Media here in Long Beach. Wizards of the West Coast. Tapping out and slinging spells. I hate your deck. We want to give you the true LGS experience. We show up, sling spells, and have fun. Now meet our players for this episode. What's up, it's Lynch from I Hate Your Deck. Welcome to another episode where we're gonna play some spicy magic with spicy people. And as always, I just like playing spicy paper magic with my friends. Oh, it's spicy. spicy. <laughs> hey guys, it's David. Welcome back to I Hate Your Deck, my show. Today, I'm coming back with Toroff, God of Fury. You know, every time I try to get the win, I always end up losing. So today, I've just come to accept that I'm cursed and I'm never gonna win. Hey, what's up? It's Larry, I'm here to tell David that reverse psychology doesn't work on the universe. I'm gonna bring the heat with my mono red deck too. We'll have fun playing paper magic with our friends. I am Ailey, also known as RPG Fox. Welcome back. I am here to hopefully create a very large spell and melt everyone's face off. Let's get down to business. Let's talk about, you know, rule zero in the pregame conversation. I think all the dual lands are proxied in this deck. That's They're nice fair. proxies that were given to me by someone, so like you'll see they have like Kamigawa themed to the dual lands. That's really cool. Most of the deck though I think is real besides the, the proxy dual lands. <laughs> Today, since we were talking about playing some spice, I thought I would have fun with the Ur Daddy, Ur Dragon, because it's such a fun deck. The little fun part is all of the Commander Legends 2 dragons are shoved in it. I got to have fun with some of those new mechanics of rolling a d20 and seeing what you can get a value from those Legends 2 dragons. The Ur Dragon, for those who haven't played against it, is eminence. As long as Ur Dragon is in command zone or in the battlefield, other uh, dragon spells you cost cast one less. Whenever one or more dragons you control attack, draw that many cards, then you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. I'm playing Toralf again. I don't think anything's changed since the last time we saw it. Just regular deal damage to everyone's face uh, and punishing them for playing creatures. So I'm playing Zada Hedron Grinder. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Zada Hedron Grinder, copy that spell for each other creature you control that the spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. So this deck is really cool in my opinion because it takes what are objectively bad combat tricks and weird pump spells with a draw a card writer and combines that with a bunch of other draft chaff stuff like Goblin Instigator to create an engine where I end up paying one mana to draw 10 cards and give my whole team haste if all goes well. Uh, so it's a combo deck with a pretty real fail rate, but it, it does absolutely degenerate things if it gets there, all for under 120 bucks. I like it. Hopefully you guys will too. <laughs> I am going to replay Riku, and I this time I'm gonna be a better, like, Tamer Mage and kind of use my stuff a little bit more wisely rather than just go big or go home. This deck kind of does nothing until it does everything. It's not as interactive as a lot of people assume, but it does have a decent amount of instance in there. So yeah, I'm gonna craft a really big spell and hopefully melt you all to like a nice little puddle of lava. I hate your deck! Now enjoy the show. Let's roll to see who goes first. I want to be me for once. Six. Yeah. Oh, oh, roll on! Oh. Good hair I'm, versus cookie duster. I'm sorry if I win. Oh. oh. Do your thing. Awesome. I will draw this card. I'll tap one for soaring. Spicy. Pass. 
Killer. I'll Get her. Off her turn, <laughs> play a mountain, tap the mountain for Impulsive Pilferer. He is a 1 1 Goblin Pirate. When he dies, I create a treasure token. He has Encore, so I can exile him from my graveyard and create a copy of him for each opponent, and those tokens attack a different opponent if able. They can do so because they gain haste, and then I sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. I can Encore only as a sorcery. I pass the turn after that. A draw. I play a snow-covered mountain, and then I tap one for a mana vault. What mana vault says, it doesn't untap during my untap step. The beginning of my upkeep only I can pay four. If I do, I untap my mana vault. The beginning of my draw step, if mana vault is tapped, it deals one damage to me. Then I could tap it to add three mana. I will do that now by tapping for three mana and playing a commander sphere. You guys know what commander sphere does. Then I'll pay zero to play a chromox imprinting shattering spree so now i'm gonna add one mana of the exiled cards colors which is red and i'm going to add a red and a red for braid of fire braid of fire has a cumulative upkeep of add red to my mana pool At the beginning of my upkeep i can put an age counter i add one red for each age counter on it basically that's my turn be sure <laughs> you two are degenerates. So you pass though officially? Yeah, I, I officially. Okay, I will draw for turn. This is my first turn. Turn turn one. This is turn one for me. I'm going to play a tundra. It's a sick tundra. This is the nice proxy I told you about. So it's blue white land tundra. Mine I will pass the turn with the tundra and not be a degenerate. <laughs> I'm gonna play stomping ground untapped and Check it in. pass. Hurt yourself. Okay, Check. I'll untap, draw, play a mountain. I'll pay two and cast Carrie Zev, Skyship Raider. She's a 1-3 first strike menace. When she attacks, I create a 2-1 red legendary monkey named Ragavan. That's tapped and attacking. I exile that token at the end of combat. I'll declare battle and I'll attack David. Sure, I feel yes. like that's pretty fair. Yeah, I pass. <laughs> I untap. During my upkeep, I put an age counter on my braid of fire. So I put an age counter. The cost is adding a red to my mana pool. And I will use that red floating and add four more red to untap my mana vault. And then I will go into my draw step and I'll draw a card. And I will play a guildless commons tapped. And when it enters, I will return a land. It's a colorless bounce land, basically. I will tap three with my mana vault to play a dark steel plate. What dark steel plate says, it's a three mana equipment and dark steel plate is indestructible and then equipped creature is indestructible and it has equipped two. And I'll pass. We literally have Junior Barry at the table. Love your wonderful, well said explanation of what you did on your board. On your end step, I'm gonna tap one blue and I'm gonna brainstorm. Hold on just a sec. Are uh, you countering my No, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna counter. <laughs> Brainstorm on the stack. Brainstorm on the stack. I'm going to respond to it by playing Seething Song. Add five red to my mana pool, and then I will tap for a sixth mana to cast Reiterate with the buyback cost, and I'm going to copy that. So you were both brainstorming yes. with your Reiterate. So this will resolve and go to my hand, and I will brainstorm. Fun little fact about Braid of Fire. I think I said this last time, but it was printed in a time when mana burn was a thing. So it was very scary for people to have a mana that they could only use on their upkeep because it would be cumulative and they would lose a bunch of life. Untap, draw after resolving. Yeah, I knew that was coming. I'll play a volcanic island. I can't do anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because I'm missing the colors. So I pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. I'll play my proxy, Tropical Island. There you go. That one's pretty sick too. That's what I needed. Fun little fact about Volcanic Island, the original art for Birds of Paradise was supposed to be the art for Volcanic Island. I will pass the turn. Okay, so I'll untap, go. draw. AKA Captain Cookie Duster. <laughs> I'll declare battle. I'll attack David with the Botham. Carry Zev on attack, triggers, and brings a 2-1. It's tapped and attacking at you, David. So total four damages. All right. One, two, three, four. Elemental will, at the end of combat, it will die, and then I will pass the turn. I'm going to untap. During my upkeep, I'm going to add 
two red mana with my braid of fire and two colorless for my guildless commons to untap my mana vault then i'm going to draw a card I'm going to play a snow covered mountain so i'm going to tap two red one with my commander one with my mountain and three colorless for my mana vault to play Torolf, so I have one colorless floating. Torolf God of Fury is a 5-4 trample for four, and it says whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, Torolf deals damage equal to the excess to any target other than that permanent. I'm going to use the colorless floating from my mana vault and one red from my Chromox to equip Torolf God of Fury with Dark Steel Plate. So now Torolf is a 5-4 indestructible trample with all his other words in his text box. And I'll pass. I will accept that passing and I will untap draw. Sure, hope you do. I will play a mountain for turn, which is still not what I 100% needed, but I will be able to now finally cast a spell. I'll join the rest of you, uh, mages, by actually doing something. Cultivate. I'll cast Dragon's Horde. Whenever a dragon enters battlefield under control, put a gold counter on Dragon's Horde, remove a gold counter from Dragon's Horde, draw a card, and I can tap to add one mana of any color now. So now at least I can hit some of those colors I'm missing. Pass, I had no green even. Oh, no green. Untap, upkeep, draw. I will play a command tower as my land for turn, and then I will pass. I will untap. sad. <laughs> Draw. I'm gonna pay three, okay. and I'm going to cast Carry Zev's Expertise. Mm. Gain control of target creature or vehicle until end of turn. Mm -hmm. Untap it. It gains haste until end of turn. You may cast a card with converted mana cost two or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So I don't mana? see any creatures on the battlefield. Gain control of target creature or vehicle until Does he get the equipment too? Oh. You still technically control the equipment, even though someone t has taken control of the creature. So if he kept it, you could pay the two to re-equip it. And I get to cast a spell with CMC two or less from my hand for free. Uh, that's going to be Samut Sprint and all target Toralf, because why not? So that gives him plus two, plus one in haste until end of turn, and I get to scry one. So two instances of haste actually cancel each other out, so he is tapped. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go to combat. <laughs> There's like, y Pat Young, Pad One. No one out thinks the uh, thinker who so makes people misplayed in me. Seven, eight, eight, nine, 10, 11 at you, young sir. Uh, 11? God damn. What did you do to Larry in a past life? <laughs> I, I guess I played too many artifacts. I also so. play mono red, and I see how this works. I know your tricks. <laughs> You're done? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna untap upkeep. Add three, and I'll use one from my snow-covered mountain to untap mana vault. And I'll draw a card. Play snow-covered mountain, and I will tap for two to play a ruby medallion. And then I will pay, I have to do it again. I'm gonna tap this commander sphere for one red. And then I'm gonna sacrifice it and draw a card. So I have one red floating. I'm gonna move to combat, and I'm yep. gonna attack Larry with a 5-4 Toralf. I deserve that. It's nowhere near my 24 life, but I'm getting there. I'll pass. Baby steps, they don't have to be large steps. They just have to take you in the right direction. I feel like you've clearly been the most threatening, except maybe yeah. Eilie. Eilie yeah. is doing scary things and developing her hand. Untap, draw. Scrubland. Scrub. Well, All right, I'm gonna tap these two. To Farseek. Search your library for a plains, island, swamp, or mountain card and put it on the battlefield. Thank you, Lynch. Tapped. In response to Farseek, I'm going to tap for six to reiterate and buy back, copying that spell. I keep forgetting buyback goes to your hand, not like on the library. <laughs> <laughs> Those are expensive. All right. I'm going to get Wow, look at that. Look at that. I must have. Oh, shit. Wow. I got to buy you into play, but it's tapped. But really? I will get the Ketria Triumph. Untap, upkeep, draw. Play a land for the turn. I'm gonna pass. Okay, I'll untap, draw. Yes, I untap them too. They deserve it. They get to have some fun. I'll pay three and cast Seething Song. Five red manias to my mania pool. What are you gonna do with all that? Many manias. I'm going to cast Krenko Mob Boss. Okay. With four of that mania. No haste, right? No. Sweet. Not yet. 
I'm going to use the one remaining mana to cast Kick in the Door. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. That creature gains haste until end of turn and can't be blocked by walls this turn. Venture into the dungeon. Okay, so... Riley. Riley, trust me. Let this happen. I'm <gasps> just trying to keep in mind what's going to happen. You have two goblins, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm also gonna go into the first room of Lost Mine of Fandelver. I, is one of them, both, both of them are Scry 1? Lost Mine of Fandelver, Cave Entrance, Scry 1, and then you can either go to Goblin Lair and create a 1-1 Goblin, or Mine Tunnels to create a treasure. So Kick in the Door will give Krenko a plus one counter. It will also grant him haste. So I will tap him after that to make two Goblins. Krenko doing Krenko things. And then I'll declare battle and hit Lynch for three total. Uh, in response to attacking. So you attack and then you make the Ragavan, right? Sure. Which yeah. is a 2 1. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tap for five. And because my red spells cost one less, I'm going to play Fault Line to deal four damage to each creature without flying and each player. Response you could probably hold your, your breath on this. I'm gonna tap two. So how much is it? It's four damage? Yeah, so it's 13 excess in total right now. Okay, 13. Plus three, four to each six, of us. Nine, so I have 13 anyway. Well, yeah, he gets four increments of three and one of one. Uh, two blue. Don't count it as. I'm gonna snap Tor off to your hand. I hate you. I really don't wanna take the risk of taking a bunch of damage. You are a terrible person. <laughs> I will untap two lands. The yeah. board wipe happens, but so all the excess damage won't. Goes nowhere. Right. We will still get hit for four. I was coming at Mike for that damage. I you wanted to deal the 13 damage. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it didn't have to be like that, dude. It didn't, but... So I make a treasure from Impulsive Pilfer. But now you can Encore, so look at the bright side. Yeah, I probably will be Encoring at some point or another. Your piston is lemonade. <laughs> I, well, I Lee pissed in my lemonade, so. <laughs> Took the jam out of your donut. <laughs> really salted my apples. Salted my apples, wow. <laughs> I prefer caramel. Is it salted I caramel? <laughs> I guess you could do salted caramel. Mr. Larry, yes. cookie dust. Yes, I'm, I'm still very turn. much done. During my upkeep, I add four, and I use the four to untap my mana vault. Draw a card. And I play Forbidden Orchard, which is one of my favorite. It is a land. Tap to add one mana of any color, but whenever I tap Forbidden Orchard, target opponent creates a 1-1 colorless spirit token. I like that. <laughs> it was one of the cards that I didn't have. Can I have, have a, a spirit token? Maybe. I'll, I'll think about it. So I'm going to tap four red. Larry, you've been just so nice to me, so you can have a colorless spirit token. Fair, I guess. <laughs> four red mana, and then I'm also going to tap for three colorless mana, so I have seven, four red and three colorless floating. I'm gonna use two red and one colorless, so I have two red and two colorless floating to play my commander Torelf, God of Fury. And the other two red and two colorless is going to be spent on Ember Maw Helion. So what Ember Maw Helion says is four or five trample for five. And if another red source I control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals that much damage plus one to that permanent or player instead. That includes me. We don't talk about the great calling. <laughs> now that all of that is there, I'm gonna tap two. I'm gonna equip my Dark Steel Plate to Torolf, God of Fury. Pass the turn Your with an empty hands. hand. Yeah. Untap. Draw for turn. Hey, I give you a colorless spirit. Nonetheless, <laughs> revenge. Play a land, the uh, Haven of Dragon Spirits. Just short, man. Always just short. All six. And Seven, you're not tapping that? All right. No, reducing by one because the Ur Dragon. More Jellies, fun. man. The Boundless. It's oh, six, Christ. Six. Uh, I will choose dragons as it enters the battlefield. So spells the chosen type you cost has Uber Glass. This effect reduces only amount by colored mana you pay. Other creatures you control the chosen type get plus one, plus one. So I will pass the turn on the cast and resolution. Uh, do you get a fun. gold counter because it's a shapeshifter it is, changeling? Yeah, you will get the, oh. the trigger from that because it Thank is you. technically a dragon. Untap, upkeep, draw. So I can just do that now. I can just t tap and remove this gold counter. You, you could, could, if you and want. And I'm gonna draw a card mm -hmm. on... My turn? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Larry looks like he's about to be in a show now, like doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> <laughs> My glass cannon got stepped on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Never heard I that feel before. That. <laughs> glass I just, scanning, God stepped on. Uh, that I, yeah, I get the it. message though. The message I mean, yeah, clear. it makes sense. I just I wasn't like my glass house got you know destroyed. It's like my glass cannon that I had. Air five. Riku. I wanted to do two middle fingers to say two, but this is Pass a family channel. Everybody. The turn. I'll untap, draw. I'll play a mountain. I'll declare battle and attack Eile for one. Take it. Wait, is it a flying spirit? No, it's a regular spirit. You like your commander? My commander is a two, too. I know. The <laughs> oh, what is... I look down at all the mountains and I'm like, There's a lot of red mana available at instant speed. Do you fuck around and find out? That is the question on this Pardon register. Hand? Two. He has it. He's got fuck around and find out. <laughs> he has it. He's if I'm not going to win, I'm going to play the fuck out of the mini game. <laughs> I'm the oh, fucked yeah. up mini games. I'm take, take it. The okay, take, take one. I'll take one. It's just one. Uh, the mind yeah, games have begun. One. Declare no blockers. Plus yeah, three, okay, plus okay. one. Yeah. Plus move, move to damage. No other, no take, effects. Take, take one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End of combat, nothing else? Nothing else. <laughs> Second main phase, I'll pay four and cast Zada Hedron Grinder. There she is, next to her little treasure hedron. Do you have a bunch of cards with heroic in there? I have a couple with heroic, or like one, maybe. There aren't <laughs> many good ones that are also cheap. I wanted to build Annex and Siamede and call it Apples and Cyanide. <laughs> See, I call it Anthrax and Cyanide. So uh, is, are you passing? Yes. yes. It, your time. I always yes. wanted to build them because I thought they set a great precedent for like, you know, a loving couple in magic. So this goes to five, I use four to untap my mana. I hate you. <laughs> I draw. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So jealous. This is so, so dope. <laughs> yeah, you're doing good. I'm gonna tap eight. Well, I tap seven and my red spells cost one less. Okay, uh, token? Uh, sure. Yeah. That's to three targets. So I'm gonna play Jaya's Immolating Inferno. It's two and X. It is a legendary sorcery, which is a shame that it hasn't come back. Legendary sorcery says I can cast a legendary sorcery only if I control a legendary creature or planeswalker, which I do. I control Tor off my commander. And it says Jaya's Immolating Inferno deals X damage to each of up to three targets. I'm gonna deal eight damage to Morph on the Boundless, Zada Hedron Grinder, Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Wait a minute here. Why not go around the table and actually like? Oh, he you has know, a third target. Target this, and then maybe just target my face. No, but it's better than killing Three one of your one ones targets. because I'm gonna have excess. Mm. I'd say the best removal is player 13. removal. Right, but I can help remove players. Don't listen to him. I'm saying let me keep he's, my commander. He's a snake in Two cards wolf in sheep's clothing. Can't. He's a snake in wolf's clothing. <laughs> you know that I am your enemy, but in the short term, I can be your buddy if you don't kill this now. After this turn, feel free to kill it. I'm sure you probably will. So what I is have your nonsense third like target? This. Okay, so are this, you, is this is target one. This is for sure one. Target number two. Target number three. Well, in but response. This red, really shuts me down losing this. Red, I was gonna really get reductions. Yeah, I know. And, and one, now you're really not gonna get anything out of that. I'm going to cast reiterate copying Jaya's Emulating Inferno. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, and it deals plus one. It would deal nine damage technically. It's not gonna deal all of that because she's probably gonna kill this before your spell even uh, resolves. So yeah, I'm going to make a copy of it if this spell resolves. Kill the Hellion, shoot Lynch in the face. I will hit the untapped token. So you still get the trigger. Pour off deals damage equal to the excess damage to any target. Doesn't say oh, you have to control shit. it. So I've been playing this card wrong for years. You could kill my dude, but then he would decide what happens to the seven. Seven. Damage. Yes. You're you, gonna make a deal? If you, okay, here's the deal. If you don't hit Mike in the face, but kill his other spirit, I'll deal Mike seven and him seven. Mm, that's one less. Mike's getting the worst deal out of this. He's losing his commander and he's getting seven or eight damage. Not my I, commander, but... Uh, no, uh, not your commander. I'm not going to step on him that much. I'll still hit Lynch oh. in the face. Eight? Okay. The Hellion's going to take eight. Yes, it is. And then eight damage to the spirit. To the untapped spirit. So seven reflection. Seven reflection to deal. I'm going to deal it to your spirit, and then I have six excess, and I'm gonna deal it to your face. 
literally that works that way? Yes, because... Yeah. Wow, that's uh, snapped. Okay. It is pretty nuts. I was looking at it with the Hellion because the Hellion effectively gives anything plus two if it goes through Toral. Mm -hmm. Now this now you resolves. can clink down the so whole ballet. Her Jaya is immolating Inferno resolved. So now I'm gonna deal eight damage to Morphon, Riku, and Zada. In total, I have 13 excess. I'm gonna deal eight to you and five to you. Pretty wild little situation we got going that, on here. Uh, that seems like a mistake, dude. Why, what would you have done? I would be targeting Eile with every possibility <laughs> wow. if I was in your shoes. Because she's the only one who can do any fucking thing about <laughs> anything you're doing. She's copied both of your Holy damage crap. spells so far. Like, <laughs> you, she's like, kill! Larry's like, kill Eile and My all only costs. regret is that I pissed David off in Are the first of the game. I should have been clapping no, on you like, Whose turn is it? I'm, it's, it's my turn. Still, I'm okay. gonna move to combat okay. and attack Isla with Toralf, God of Fury. See? Five damage. Five commander damage. Fire! Just trying to bring everyone you, down to an even place. now passing? Yes. All right, so I will be able to untap with my board state. Uh, severely and uh, saddened. Shock in, stomping ground. Lose two life. So I'll tap three. Doesn't really matter what color. Hers is incubator. I'll choose dragons. Creature spells of the chosen type cost two less to play, so now my stuff is three less. I just top deck that. Would have been nice if more fun was out. Is that out. for everyone? Yeah, anyone with dragons. It is. Oh, I never realized that. It is a symmetrical effect. Then I can tap three, which two is red, for six total. And I'll cast Laughless, the Dragon Queen, 6-6. Six, six. Whenever a non-token dragon you control enters the battlefield, create a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature. I'll get another gold counter on my dragon horde. Can I take a take back shot to swap one of those lands? Would you guys yes. accept that? Sure. Mmm, juicy. Why <laughs> you Why did you say it like that? You said like, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa, there we go. Okay, oh. it's a full one though. All right, I'll do a quick one. Mm. Mm, good. <sighs> okay. <laughs> so, three so, less. Uh, oh, I hate so, your deck. Mm. <laughs> Slinging the spicy, <laughs> <laughs> the spiciest <coughs> magical cards. I'm going to okay, tap this done. and remove the gold counter and draw a card. And I pass the turn. Untap. I got, a, I got a flyer. For the love of God, give me something good. Hopefully you don't destroy it right away. Oh, it's dying immediately. Root-bound crag. Is that all that's in there? Or is it just X spells? Uh, no, there's a couple. You're top decking into these. Yeah, I am top deck. I hope okay. you draw land. I actually do hope you draw land too. Tap two blue for Flood of Recollection and I will target Seething Song and then Holding Priority, tap two to cast Increasing Vengeance, copying it. And the copy, if that resolves, will target or reiterate. We'll pass the turn and both these cards will be in my hand. Flood of Recollection gets exiled, yes, right? Yes, it does. I'll untap, draw, play a mountain, tap six, cast Zada, because that's what I can really do here. Pass. You're why he's so sad. Sada. Untap, upkeep, add six. Use four to untap my mana vault, and I'll draw. I will move to combat and attack you, I leave four or five. And I'll pass. I will untap. I'll draw for turn. I'll tap blue, red, green. I'll play Tamir Ascendancy. Creatures you control of haste. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters battlefield under your control, draw a card. I love that card in the dragon deck. Really good champ, yeah. period. But in the dragon deck, it's just, oh, hi, all my creatures are four and up. Hi, so I'd like to hug you with my claws. So I tap four here. I have three reduced. So I can cast Kluth, Unrivaled Ancient, Dragon, mm. Flying Haze. And when he attacks, add X mana any combination of colors where X is the total power of attacking creatures. Spend this mana only to cast spells until end of turn. You don't lose mana as steps end and base it end. Because it's a creature four or greater, I get two draw card. And then I get the counter. I also, whenever a non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you get a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token flying. That triggers. Then, then this sees that I had another four creature four or greater enter. So then I'll draw a card for that. Dragon's horde ticks up. Oh, they all have haste. They all have haste because of this. I can now go to attack. 
Dave is doing lots of damage. Mm -hmm. Uh, don't do that. Do you hear that? He's threatening you. Is that I have like a lot of open mana, like nine. You're gonna take so that? So if I don't attack you, you won't blow up don't, my board? Don't listen no. to him. I won't blow up your board if you don't. don't. I'll take, I'll take that smoke. He's gonna do it anyways. I'm going to turn all of these sideways. What his deck does, don't listen to him. Who are they at, Michael Lynch? I'm declaring wombats. I think it should be noted, I'm tapped out. I have two cards in hand. This is a tinder box of bullshit for you to deal with. <laughs> this, I'm here with my glass cannon waiting to be stepped on. I'd also like to right. say that he did a bunch of damage to your face earlier. I'll send just four at you. Fair. Nine white. And then I'll send the rest at Eilie. No. <laughs> so so 11 at you and four so. here. I'm taking it. Do you pass priority? He's gonna get a pile of mana. So I just get 15, I'm gonna have 15 so, mana well, to spend. With the attack trigger. What how can many I cards possibly do, do with a grip of mana in a I dragon don't know. deck? How many cards do you have in hand? Too many. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Uh, what if I promise to only spend, maybe, you know, use it all in like two cards? Those two cards can be very dangerous. <laughs> but unfortunately, I'm not gonna save David's face from anything, so I guess I'm just gonna take 11, and you can have your mana. Second main, I have 15 mana in my mana pool from the cloud trigger, from the total power. You do have to determine what colors they are. One does not matter, so the only thing I would have needed was just, I could just say it's it's green. I'll go ahead, I'll remove a counter, I'll tap this. So we decided it's all green. And I'll draw, so I will put Garuk's Uprising. So it triggers on ATB, I draw a card. Creatures I have trample, and whenever a creature four enters the battlefield, draw a card. So I now have two triggers to draw a card when a creature enters. I'm gonna, 12 green floating. And then I'm gonna play this for three less, which costs 12, the sign of Draco. Flying, each creature controls vigilance if it's white, hexproof if it's blue, lifelink if it's black, first strike oh, if it's red, and trample if it's green. The spell costs two less for each basic land type you have. So do you, how many basic land well, types do you have? I count only three. Counts. Well, that's one, two, three. But those aren't basic lands. Basic it doesn't, land type. It's a land so type, so he's got so forest, land. mountain, island. So then it costs 10 less. Okay, yeah, yeah, so you have, you all, have five. all five. So this is gonna cost 10 less. Oh my God, it's free. No. <laughs> It well, costs 10 less because yeah. of the domain. Oh yeah, just straight up, dude, you free. cast this for free. Hold on, well then <laughs> I, hold on. Then the I, domain, the... I definitely wouldn't have done all green if that was free. Would Say it with me now. Red. Hot sauce. <laughs> all right, hot shot sauce. That's your second one, so if you do another yeah. one, you gotta yeah, take I mean, the no, shot I don't you lose. Yeah, and I lose, yeah, so I can't, I can't David do any more take backs. David called it. I, I told him, I was yeah. like, oh, 15 Well, I green. thought I was gonna, I was, I was like, that's gonna bite him in the ass. I didn't realize it was basic land type. I guess I just thought it was like basic land and I only had one. All right. How's that hot sauce taste, Mike? Bye-bye. <sighs> Good, <laughs> Goodbye right. health, hello. Old so sir. half was green, <laughs> half was, was, um, was uh, uh, red. Half green, half red. It was free, so I wouldn't have had, I had 12. because yeah, it's 10 less from the domain. I put this down. Mm -hmm. Half red, half green. So six, six. Watch this one bite him in the ass too. <laughs> no, it's not even in the ass. Okay, so before you move on, you have one, two, three triggers on casting that. Oh my God, you're gonna draw like six cards. Dude, I'm telling you, this shit's gonna Wait, bite him in the ass. how am I drawing six cards? This comes into play, Four. it's gonna trigger Lathless. You make. I make another dragon. Yes, and so this dragon you triggers these. You draw two these. cards per. And then yes, this you dragon. Yes, you draw four, four. So four I'm gonna draw cards. four cards. Tell you, he's gonna draw like so a bunch of one, two, three All right, white so what blue is it? dragons. What, what was it you decided on? Six red, six, six green. Please keep track of that. <laughs> now I haven't played a land for turn. No. Two to go to 10. Two what? One of each. One of each? To cast an arcane signet. Man, that card sucks. It doesn't draw you any extra or anything. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid rocks, bring Dargons. I will play a rootbound crag for turn. I'll tap this one, and then I'll lose three, go to seven. Three what? I have seven left, so I'll say four red, three green. Ooh, interesante. And I will play Oracle of Moldaya, so I'll play with the top card revealed. <laughs> Hey, Okay. one of the D&D dragons <laughs> has now, you know, finally made its appearance, even though it's not on the battlefield. Uh, the ancient copper dragon. Two red, going down to five. Terror of the Peaks hits the battlefield. Oh, Scary no. Terry. Terror of the Peaks <laughs> will trigger Lathless and will trigger this. We'll create another dragon. 
Terror Peaks is going to trigger when it sees this, where um, it can, fine. whenever another creature enters the battlefield, deals damage equal to its power to any target. So does it see the dragon that it makes? Yes. yes. Because they're all on the battlefield. Only because it's, it's not making a dragon, Lathless is making the dragon. Uh, got it, got it, got it. So that's going to trigger. So I'm going to have four card draws. So And that's on and ETB. Five or five six? Five damage, five. just five. Uh, we do get to see the cards you draw because of Oracle. Or would I have to do this damage before I draw? It depends on how you organize your triggers, because they all happen at the, as, yeah, during the same that. trigger okay. event. I'll do the five damage to your face. Five? Because it's a five. Okay. Correct. And then I'm going to draw, ooh. What are we drawing? Two of the, so the Ancient Gold Dragon, which is from Commander Legends 2, Copper Dragon, Elder Burrow, Elder. And three, three visits. visits. Yeah. We're in danger. <laughs> Flip the top card. Two red and three green left. Right? Oh, and I can play an and extra additional land, land, additional land, and I can play it from the top. So I'll play the plateau onto the battlefield. Flip oh, again. Right. <laughs> Escape. I think if Mike gets another turn, we lose. We're, we're going to die for sure. Oh, all of his Almost creatures have haste. Yeah, he's already attacked, though. That's how he got all this mana in the first place. Oh, that's correct. So this costs four. Mm -hmm. So I'll use, which one's the red? This is the red. So you use the two red, use and the then two you red. use one uh, green. And I'll cast the Ancient Copper Dragon. Flying, whenever Ancient Copper Dragon deals combat damage to a player, roll d20. Mm -hmm. You create a number of treasure tokens equal to the result. Away. That'll trigger, oh, I ran out of tokens. Here, so we'll I'll just, just put make, two. Yeah. So I got three. So I have two triggers here. So I can send six and five. Oh, shit. From the, mm -hmm. the Terror of the Peaks. You end up dealing 11 right now. So I'll hit... I'll hit Eile. <laughs> Hold on. I hit Eile for 11 unless you can do something. Cause I'm gonna have to, because it seems like you, you might be right. You might be the person that is gonna do stupid shit to end my reign of terror. So, so upon, there's still triggerings happening, right? Are you doing that before? Uh, upon you casting it, before you get the dragon. Cast what? Casting this. So this is on the stack, because the Terror of the Peaks probably needs to... You're so doing, I'm doing this before you get the dragon from the token the dragon. Okay. So this is on the stack. Yes. Has not ETP'd. No. So we got ahead of ourselves so, in the targets. So tap three for Seething Song to add five red mana to my mana pool. His terror is a five five. Five four. And you have to pay three life to. I will take the three for targeting target. it though. Two red and four X to cast Electro Dominance to shoot the Terror for... In response, damage. I'm gonna fork that. Ooh. So I'm gonna have my own Electro Dominance. Then I get to deal four any way I want, right? Yes. And you get to play a thing with four less for free? Yes. You did. It's been a big turn. It's been a big turn. Okay. Your Electro Dominance, your target? I will target Kyrath or Krauth Klaus. or whatever. whatever. Okay. A sick bluff, by the way, David, mm -hmm. earlier in the time. Oh, yeah. Sick bluff. I was so bluffing. <laughs> I was bluffing <laughs> so hard. Okay, hold on. So let's continue. What's going on? I'm. His is going to kill Klauth, and mine's going to kill the... The Tear the Peaks. Yes. Okay. So these Santa these Klaus. two will die. Nothing triggers You have dying, nothing in hand, right? Down. No, no, no. Okay. So my Electro Dominance will... There is no excess damage to any of these dorks? Nope. No, it was all no, four. It was, four, it was four, exactly four. four. Uh, through the Electro Dominance, I will hold. play... Part of its resolution, yeah, so I'm going to cast Veil of Summer mm. since a blue spell was cast this turn, and I will draw a card. It and resolves. That card being yes. better than it is. And then, so Ancient Cover Dragon that'll trigger Lathless. This will have three. These both will trigger this, so I'll draw four. Mana Crypt, Escape, uh, Temple Garden, and a Rhythm of the Wild. So I will go ahead and just play. You've already you played, played your two second lands. land for turn already. It's, it's, it's Mana, Mana Crypt. Crypt. Oh, sorry. Oh, flip top. So I'm playing a Mana Crypt, I gotta flip the top, it's a Flooded Strand, and as you said, I've already played my my stuff. This, the Mana Crypt for two colorless, and this two for white, and the reduction of three to cast Ancient Gold Dragon. So now you have two green floating. And does that resolve? Mm-hmm. Okay, so then that'll, tr when ETBs, it'll trigger Lathless, so this goes to four. I have two dragons, that'll trigger this, so I'll draw another four cards. One, uh, Gazlith. <laughs> Uh, Teneb the Harvester, Arid Mesa, Hinter Harbor, and then, oh, there's the other Commander Legends 2 dragon, Ancient Brass Dragon. I don't have any like things to keep my hand, I think, so I'm gonna have to discard a lot. Uh, so I think that's the end of my turn, and I think all my triggers have, have resolved. Imagine where we'd be if you had killed Klaus, like, okay. from the jump. So I'll cast three <laughs> visits 
Problem with the is, last two. Okay. That was my game ending tool. Mm. If I got something that I needed. So yeah. now I can't do anything as far as. I'll I'm get a concerned. tropical island for my three visits. Very yeah, good. I'm gonna go to my discard phase. So that's all she wrote. Okay. Moral of the story, always bluff. Preordain. Nice, nice. Right two. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. So scry two, draw a card. Put one at the bottom, one at the top. Prayer then goes to your graveyard. Yep. I'll play Volcanic Island as my land for turns. Discarding Rhythm of the Wild, Gazalath, Crojan Verge, Arid Mesa, Flooded Strand, uh, Escape of the Wilds, and Temple Garden. She now trying to go infinite. This is why I tried to kill her. But you couldn't. I'm very proud of my bluff. I didn't want to fuck around. It was believable out. too because he only came at you for four. Right. So it was kind of like, like, yeah, okay, right, I'll, I'll take four. four so that Ivy takes Womps too, you know? And you were like, I was like, man, that's all right, sure play. What are you doing? I'm trying to make sure because it, it requires math. Coming up one mana short, waiting to get clapped on. That's all. That's been my story all game. Yep. I, it's okay. I understand. Wow. No. <laughs> so if I did. Wow, yeah, coming for you, Larry. <laughs> Three mana to cast Seething Song. Okay. Getting five red mana. Super dark I'm gonna use creature. that five mana to cast Past in Flames. Oh. Uh, so so one mana me. remaining. So Past in Flames says, each instant and sorcery card in my graveyard gains flashback until end of turn. Flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. So Mike, this is my graveyard. I think you're dead here, bud. Two. Three to cast Seething Song from my graveyard. Yes. Currently no mana in your pool. No. Holding priority? On the stack, hold priority. I will tap two red to cast Increasing Vengeance from my graveyard targeting Seething Song. Now because this was cast from my graveyard, it copies it twice. So it can override this flashback? Well, this is flashback on the card. It gives it flashback using its mana cost rather than I think the it has flashback two. cost. So yeah, it, it, has it has technically two, has both flashback yeah, costs? Yeah, it has two different alternative and costs. Okay. And I just need to cast this from my graveyard, it doesn't matter how. So I cast it and it'll copy Seething Song twice. With this also on the stack, continuing to hold priority. Two red and one to cast Reiterate, copying Increasing Vengeance. So that copy will retain the copy it twice part of the Sorry. spell. So once this resolves, create a copy and I'm gonna have one the copy target increasing vengeance. So it's gonna copy the increasing vengeance twice. So wait. So this goes infinite. Two copies of increasing vengeance and then you're copying increasing I'm, vengeance. I'm using one to copy the increasing vengeance continuously on the stack and the other copy is seething song. So you have infinite red mana. So I'm gonna make infinite red mana. And then you have electro dominance and we all lose. I'm starting to sweat, I wasn't sweating earlier. I was like, yeah, that last takes back the shit. Past in flames for its own flashback cost. Uh, this gains flashback, and infinitely I will cast Electro Dominance for 500. And then I will cast Reiterate from the graveyard, copying Increasing in Vengeance again, and changing up the targets to Increasing Vengeance and Electro Dominance to shoot you all in the face for 500. Checks you out. Sound, sound like that uh, deal responses? In response, I tap my Forbidden Orchard and give you a spirit. <laughs> spirit. And then we all lose. <laughs> we all lose. Good game. Hey, good yes. win, though. I, I Riku thought, did I, the thing. Riku you finally did the lead? thing. I've seen Riku do the thing. Haters gonna hate. David's gonna grow. He's gonna mop us up pretty soon. <laughs> One day. <laughs> One day. <laughs> we'll get you. We'll get you back on. Well, thanks, guys. All right, everyone. We caught a mistake in post, which we rarely do because sometimes we just don't catch mistakes. But we did. Thanks to our judge, we found a mistake. Ali wasn't able to go infinite by copying iteration and increasing vengeance because it was a copy and the copy doesn't technically get cast from the graveyard because a copy is a copy. So therefore, because she couldn't actually copy forever to go infinite, she was only able to generate 17 mana, which then she could pour 15 mana. So she poured 15 mana into hitting my face. So I'm gonna take 15 damage, taking me down to three life. Then she had no cards in hand, so she had to pass to Larry. So Larry will see what he can do with his turn. Draw, tap two, cast a dragon's fodder, make two goblins, pass the turn. All right, let's see. We're gonna untap, we're gonna upkeep, take this to seven. If Eilie didn't win, then Mike is, unless 
Mountain. Attack, Larry. <laughs> For shits and okay. Yeah, because I'd just kill your guy. Fair enough. I yeah. have big dragons. I pass. Okay, so I'll untap. I need to roll for Crypt. I'll have you roll for my Mana Crypt, which right. could be lethal. Could be lethal. <laughs> I could actually die here. Odds you take damage. Okay, oh, so I'm safe. Man. I got evens. Sucks. I will draw the Dragon Tempest on top of my deck. I will tap a Badlands and the Mana Crypt. So I'll have one floating. I will then cast the Dragon Temptus. Whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, it gains haste on a turn. Whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals X damage to target creature or player where X is the number of dragons you control. I currently control nine dragons because Oral Mokodaya is not a dragon. I had to play with this revealed. I have a reduction two and three. I have one colorless, two, three, black, black. I will cast Ancient Brass Dragon. Flying, whatever Ancient Brass Dragon deals combat damage to a player, roll d20. When you do, put a number of target creature cards with a total mana value X or less into the graveyard under the battlefield under your control where X is resolved. This will trigger where I get to draw two cards. It will also trigger Lathless, creating another dragon, but it will also trigger Dragon Temptus before it creates the other dragon. So it'll see that I have now have 10 dragons. So I'll deal 10 damage to Eilie killing her. Then I create another dragon, but I'll also draw two cards. Oh, sorry, so I, I drew a Mirari's Wake and I drew a Gold Span Dragon. I'll then flip that. I'll then do 11 damage, because now I have 11, dragon, uh, 11 damage to David. So David, why don't you take your life? I will then have to draw two cards. Well, that's a Cyclonic Rift. And then I have to reveal. Since I showed you guys the Gold Span Dragon, it only costs three. I'll just pay two red. So I'll play the, the Taiga and a mountain, and then I'm able to send 12 damage toward Larry. That will then trigger a, a Lathless. So I'll then do another 13 damage, and then I'll draw four cards, which won't really matter at this point. They go to my hand, and that's the end of the game. So that's how the game should have went. Uh, well, I guess I could have almost died, and one of you two could have you know, got right. it. You guys at home have always said that if we catch something in post, we should know better and fix it. So for all you commenters who said, fix it if you catch it. Well, this is the first time in I Hate Your Deck history where we actually caught the mistake in post, and now we played the game out how it should have been played out. So I hope you guys had fun watching this episode. And hey, we're always learning from mistakes and misplays are part of the game. And at your LGS, you'd be surprised if you filmed your games how often mistakes are made that are totally game changing. And that's also part of the LGS experience is that we're gonna make mistakes. So. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how the Ur Dragon got to pop off and do crazy things. We'll still have to bring Eilie uh, uh, back or Riku and Zada. We're going to see what Zada does. And Torolf still does Torolf things, but one day Torolf will get a win. One day. If you want to support I Hate Your Deck, please consider joining our Patreon. It's an excellent community that we have built with people from around the world where we play magic in our Discord using Spell Table. If you haven't had a chance to play online magic yet, try out our Discord. It's a great community where people are gaming daily. And every Thursdays we have Commander Day where people play all day and night, but the community's gotten so big, Commander Day is almost every day at I Hate Your Deck. Uncle Sky's popular demand sweet potato chipotle hot sauce. Wholesome ingredients, unique flavor, and just the right amount of spice. Hey, welcome to the Patreon shout out. So I thank Tony Martin, Caleb Wright, and Jared Newman. Thanks, guys. If you want a shout out, you need to be a tier four or tier five patron where we give shout outs. Now, we love all of our patrons, but it's just one of the perks of being a tier four or tier five patron. Without you patrons, we wouldn't be where we are today and we wouldn't be able to keep making content. So thank you so much for helping us make this show a reality. And we're really excited to keep bringing you great content for the years to come. I can't wait to be able to bring my son on the channel once he gets old enough, let me tell you. I hate your deck. Los Angeles is the sunny home of we, the wizards of the West Coast. And the guests we fuck with on this epic show. I hate your dad. Guitar solo. All right. The competition is.
is toe to toe. From Cassius Marsh to fucking Post Malone. The best commanders and the lowest blows. I hate your death. Enjoy the show! I hate your deck. Join the I Hate Your Deck Patreon exclusive Discord to get the various benefits and be able to play Commander daily with people from around the world in our global community.